I'm Diego Sanchez, COO of HW Media, and this is 10 Minute Talks. My guest today is Scott Reese, SVP at Atlantic Bay Mortgage. Scott, welcome to 10 Minute Talks. Thank you so much, Diego. I really appreciate uh, the invitation to be here and uh, all the support you and Clayton have given me online. So much appreciated. Really great to have you on. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Before we dive in, could you give a 30 second introduction of yourself and Atlantic Bay? Sure. Uh, so I came originally from Jersey, came down for college, got a finance degree at Loyola College, now university. Uh, almost immediately after that, a year or two after that, jumped into the mortgage world, uh, started with a big bank, uh, became a manager in 1996, and I've been leading teams since that uh, from a small scale to a large scale. Uh, and Atlantic Bay has been in business for 26, going on 27 years, uh, never changed their name, same owner the whole time. Uh, he really empowers the C-level executives there, the five that are in charge to, to run the company. He's more of a consultant. And, uh, you know, large company, I think we're 38th or 39th in the, uh, in the nation last year. And um, we're expected to do about four and a half billion this year. Now, you've had a long career as a production leader and executive at various lenders. What attracted you to this opportunity at Atlantic Bay and, and what excites you about your current role there? I would say the, the main thing that attracted me was the culture. And um, when I was at my previous employer to Atlantic Bay, I was recruiting against Atlantic Bay and I would get Atlantic Bay loan originators to have conversations with me and they were always so happy. And you'll always talk to recruits that are happy where they are, but it was just different. So it got to the point where I wanted to know my competition. I said, who's in charge of recruiting for Atlantic Bay? And they said, Justin Kaplan, former large originator at Wells Fargo. So I said, I need to reach out to Justin. So I reached out to him. Um, we came, became allies and friends in the industry, and we agreed to have a lunch with no pressure. He told me what the secret sauce was there, and it was really the culture. And then for me personally, when it was time for me to make that next move, leaving from my previous company, I really wanted a seat at the table. I wanted a voice. A lot of the stuff you hear me preaching about on LinkedIn but I really wanted to know that when I look a recruit in the eyes, that I really can do everything I can to help them find wins and to impact their career and have that local autonomy as a boot on the ground instead of having to wait for someone halfway across the country to get back to me 12 hours later or the next day. Let's talk a little bit more about LinkedIn. That's how you and I were introduced. I've been following your content on the platform for a number of months. And you've been pretty brutally honest about leadership challenges in the mortgage industry. What is your motivation behind your LinkedIn content? Why do you spend time there? Honestly, I, th I think, you know, someone asked me the other day, you know, what do you want to do when you retire? And I said, I want to do a lot of volunteer work. I, I train in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so I want to advance my belts there too. But the main thing I really want to do is a lot of volunteer work. Uh, and the way I look at it is, is there's a lot of people in the mortgage industry that are not in a position, they feel the same way, but they can't voice it because if they do, there's repercussions. And it's kind of my way of giving back to the uh, industry that's been so good to me over the years and so good to my family over the years. So I try to do it in a, in a professional way, a blunt way. I don't call out specific people, even though I know some, I don't call out specific companies, but I basically try to focus on leadership, what's most important out there. And uh, it's resonating with people, as you can see online. And the, the messages and the uh, conversations I have behind the scenes with people, to me, it's extremely fulfilling. It makes me feel good, like I'm, I'm doing something to help others. And I'm a big believer in karma. Yeah, it's definitely resonating. And I encourage everyone in this audience to, to, to follow Scott on LinkedIn. Uh, and that follower account just seems to keep growing for you. What do you see as, as some of the key challenges in the key leadership challenges in the mortgage industry right now? I think, um, I think a lot of leaders are still silent right now. I think a lot of people at, at a, a, probably a majority, I'm not saying 75 to 100 percent, but well over 50 percent of the companies, they're limited in the autonomy they have. So they're not really sure what to say to the employees because maybe their boss isn't 100 percent sure or isn't really communicating with them. So I think the biggest challenge right now is uh, transparent leadership. And then I think the biggest thing that any of us as leaders that have any sense of delegated authority can do for our teams is to find wins for them on a daily basis, help restore confidence. Top originators that are used to doing 100 million are struggling to get to 40 or 50 million. 
That's where it's up to us as leaders, the boots on the front lines, to get in that foxhole with them, go out there and help them find wins, whether it's setting up a real, uh, a real estate relationship or doing a deep price concession to get that win over the two or other three, two or other, two or three other people, I'm sorry, they're competing against. So those are the things that I think are real important. I think a lot of people are managing from an ivory tower where a lot of the good leaders out there, and I put myself in that uh, rank, are we're in the foxholes, ready to take bullets and grenades, jump on the grenade for our teams. And a lot of people just aren't willing to do that. So I've had a, a previous 10 minute talk with Chrissy Zotsman Brown, uh, Atlantic Bay's COO, and just in general, I'm really impressed with the entire executive team at Atlantic Bay. How, how do you compare leadership at Atlantic Bay with some of those leadership challenges that you write about on LinkedIn? You know, it, it's, it's very unique and different, and it's hard to explain unless you're here and you get to interact with those wonderful, those five wonderful people. And I, I posted this morning, and one of the things I'm most proud of is there's four out of five of them are, are super successful, uh, intelligent, just brilliant women that are great leaders. The thing I like the most is they're all super accessible. They're all super talented in their roles. They want to help you. It's, it's so easy to get answers here and to get them quickly. And they try to find every reason to say yes instead of saying no. Now, obviously, you have to say no sometimes in every industry. But right now, with inventory being so low and volume being down for the entire industry, every deal makes a difference and they get that. And I think what what really helps with that is Brian Holland, the majority owner of the company, is more of a consultant than anything. He'll say that, hey, I, why hire C-level executives with all this talent and then micromanage them all day? I'd rather let them go do their thing. They're extremely talented people. They're wonderful to work with. And if you need, if you have questions or you need advice, pull me in. And that's the biggest difference that I've seen from other companies. Not that the other companies haven't been well run or have great people there. It's just different where they are, there's no distractions. They are totally, ownership is removed and basically just says C-level executives, go do your thing. And they do it really well. And it makes my job easier. It's a lot less frustrating getting quick answers than having to wait hours or days for answers. 100%. Uh, I, I'm familiar with that pretty intimately. Uh, have a very responsive CEO here at, at Housing Wire, Clayton Collins, and our board is also very responsive and engaged. We're actually going to have Chrissy speaking at Housing Wire Annual, an upcoming event that, that we're putting on in, in mid-October. Really excited to, to, to see her speak uh, live. Uh, I've had her you know, on, on video, but that'll be a really exciting format for her, I think. Yeah, no, she's great. And I think when you, know, you get to meet her in person too, I know you met her online through this forum as well, but yeah, she's just a, a great at her job, but an even better human being. Just Great people. And that's really what our culture is all about here. It, that's going back to why I made the decision to come here. It's it's the people knowing that, hey, that person that I report to, Emily Farley, Emily's got my back. If I, I need something, she's Johnny on the spot. And that's what we need for our people today. You need you need people on the front lines that can make decisions quickly. And you you need for the decisions you can't make, you need the people that are able to make them to get to those decisions to you quickly. Because retention is more important than recruiting. I love recruiting. I'm pretty good at it. But the best re retention tool or recruiting tool you have is retention. Keep the good originators at your company and that'll be your, they'll be the poster children for you. And there's a reason that a lot of people have stayed here for so long on both the sales and the ops side. And Chrissy's a huge part of that. So final question for me, how are you keeping your team, and it's a pretty large team at Atlantic Bay, how are you keeping them motivated during this challenging housing market? Great question. I'm, I'm being totally transparent. I do little activities each day to stay in front of them. Uh, a little, I do a question of the day to stay engaged with them. Just this morning, you know, I looked at who had locks yesterday, who had credit pulls, and I just sent them, hey, you know what? Every win is a win today. A minor win is still a win. And, and I keep them motivated with that. And honestly, Diego, the, the biggest thing that I'm doing right now is I'm helping them find wins, whether it's contributing financially to a marketing campaign or introduce working with our business development department to find uh, an MSA opportunity. And then the biggest thing right now is there's so many people fighting for every loan. Um, I'm getting quick decisions and going in and finding wins uh, when pricing concerns come into play. 
uh, which isn't that often, but you know, most loans are getting shopped now and I don't want, I want to get an answer back to them within, you know, 30 minutes or less. Amazing. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining me today. No, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate all your support and taking the time to, to bring me on today. So thank you, Diego.